What's up, Joners? B here, and today we're gonna to talk about the Part 107 retest and how important that is and why it matters. So let's get into it. All right, so first of all, when I first took my Part 107, I actually took it the very first week it came out, and then I failed it because I didn't study for it. And then I took it two weeks later because you have a two week you know, thing that in between the time you could take it again. I took it, I passed it with flying colors because of remotepilot101.com. They are amazing. Thank you guys for helping me study. But when you took it, it says that your license is only good for two years. And the FAA didn't really like say what would happen after that two years. And that two years came up rather recently and uh, I had to retake it. Well, I chose to retake it because I had put a reminder in my calendar that I needed to retake it. I went to the facility and I took that test and it was very different than the original test. But the first thing you should know is that your license does expire even though your license doesn't have an expiration date on it. And it really hit me for the first time was when I was going to get a drone permit through Film LA, they actually require that if your drone license has a date of issue that is older than two years, you also have to give them, on top of your drone license, you have to show them your certificate of approval that you have gone out and taken the test again and re-registered and you are still current. So it actually has directly affected my life as a, as a professional drone pilot and it'll affect yours if you don't take the test. So let me tell you guys a little bit more about that. So first of all, I will say the new tests, again, you can actually study for this on remotepilot101.com. They actually have a whole refresher course that I took, again, that was absolutely fantastic. So shout out to them, they did a really good job. But as a quick little nugget for you guys, what you really need to know is that this test is way easier the second time around. It's easier because one of the harder parts on the first test was the weather patterns things. It's like, why do I need to know all these weather patterns? And it kind of feels like the FAA figured out that you really don't need to know all those weather patterns. And they took that away. And it also was a shorter test. I don't remember exactly how many questions it was, but let's say the first test was 60 questions. This one was 40. You still have to get the same percentage to pass, but it's just less questions and less questions about things that are, I feel kind of like not directly affecting drones the way that they need to. So what you're really looking at here is about 40% of your questions are gonna be about the laws associated with drones and drone regulations. Another 40% is about airspace and airspace regulations. And the last 20% is about airport procedures, uh, aeronautical information involving emergency stuff. So emergency procedures you have to deal with and pretty much like high stakes situations, like pretty much something's going wrong, then how do you deal with it? How do you make decisions in those points? And that's really, really important, I think, as a drone pilot because you will be in those situations. So that's what the test really covers, and it's not as bad as the first time around, but you definitely are going to want to study for it. Some other new things that are actually happening with the uh, Part 107 and what's going on is that it looks like the FAA is doing their best to be able to allow bigger companies to actually start doing drone deliveries and use drone more for com like mass commercial use. So they are allowing drone pilots or drone companies to be able to do things past 55 pounds and pretty much stretching out or relaxing the regulations on them to be able to do research and development on new types of drones and new types of drone systems. They're also allowing drones to fly out of line of sight and be able to carry payloads commercially, which obviously looking at you UPS, looking at you FedEx, looking at you food delivery, or maybe Uber, whoever wants to do it, I don't know. But we do know that the FAA understands that this is something that is pretty much inevitable, that they need to allow some kind of drone deliveries to happen. So right now those laws are starting to be relaxed to allow that to happen. All right, and last thing that I think is really important that we talk about is the remote ID laws and the ability to do it. Now, I know that DJI, which is also the biggest drone company in the world, has been lobbying uh, the FAA and other countries to be able to be the forerunner when it comes to the technology involved with the identification or remote identification of drones. The way that works, or the way that it could work, there's a lot of different ways it could work. Um, the, the way that I visualize this working is that every drone will just have some form of metadata tag that emits a signal that if a law enforcement agency or whoever has it has a right type of transponder or receiver can get the ID of your drone within a certain distance. If they see it, they can point something at it and it'll tell you what the ID of that drone is and who pretty much that tells you who's flying the drone or who owns the drone. And the idea for this is that obviously it makes it that everybody who's flying a drone henceforth will be held accountable for whatever flights they're doing or wherever they are, which I honestly believe is a good thing because it's gonna make it so people have to behave. When you're held accountable for your decisions and your behavior, then you behave better. <laughs> That's just what happens. Obviously, there can be a lot of problems with that, like who has access to that, re that receiver? How do we put these transponders on it? Who's responsible for that? And obviously, who's gonna pay for all of it? So these regulations are definitely going to affect commercial pilots. It's gonna happen, it's coming, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. The real questions are, will they affect rec recreational pilots? Because recreational pilots right now are not able to be regulated by the FAA, but that all can change because the Senate can rewrite the, rewrite the laws. So we'll see what happens. I'm eager to see it and we'll keep you informed as we learn more. 
All right, guys, thank you guys so much for sticking with me on this information dense episode of Droner. If you want to see more information dense episodes, because we do have them and they are special, you can find them right here. Or if you want to just see a really cool opening for a drone video channel, which is what we are, click it right here. I need to ask a favor of you guys, like I always do. Go ahead and subscribe, hit that notifications button as well so you know when we drop new videos, so you can always be here right with us, and we appreciate that. And as always, make sure you stay fly. Hey, and I just have a, a special message for our subscribers. If you could just, just get a little bit closer here. All right. I really just wanna thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for subscribing. You are the reason I get to be here. So thank you from me to you. You're the best. Have a good one.